to rejoice and be glad in it, God. We thank you, Father, for your presence, God. We thank you, Father, for your glory, Father, that fills this earth, Lord God. We thank you for your spirit that dwells on the inside of us. And we thank you, Father, that we have the right to call you our heavenly and caring and sharing, Father. Lord God, we just thank you on today. Father, we even come before you this morning with a repentant heart, Lord God. Lord God, repenting of all of our sins, God. Asking, oh God, that you would create in us, oh God, a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, that you would search our hearts and that you would know us, Father. And anything, Lord God, that you find in us that is not like you, God, that you would remove it now, Father, and fill us, God, with more of you now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we come before you knowing that you are our refuge. You are a very present help in the time of trouble. Therefore, we shall not fear on today. And God, we come before you on behalf of this world, God. Lord, asking for your mercy, oh God. Asking for your help even now, Lord God. Concerning, Lord God, the things that are troubling us in this day, Father. Lord God, we run to you, Lord God. For you are our hiding place, oh God. We run unto you, Father, for you are our help and you are our strength, Lord God. We run unto you, for you are our salvation, God. We run unto you, for you are our banner. You are our high place, God. We run unto you on this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we humble ourselves before you. We humble ourselves, God, before your mighty hand right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And we apply the blood of Jesus over our land on this morning. We apply the blood of Jesus over this world, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for inclining your ear to the prayer of the righteous. We thank you, Lord God, for inclining your ear to the prayer of your children, Lord God for hearing our cry unto you, Lord God, that you would heal our land, God, that you would heal our land in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I lift up, oh God, your people everywhere, God, your children, oh God, who call upon you, Lord God, out of a sincere heart. I lift them up on today that you would strengthen them, Lord God, even in this time, God, that you would strengthen them, Lord God, even in this season, Lord God, that they would not faint, Lord God, but that their trust, oh God, will forever be in you, Lord God. Be their strength, be their shield, oh God, be their comforter right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Go before us, oh God, go before us, oh God. Thank you for being our banner, Lord God. Thank you for clothing us in your righteousness, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, we pray, oh God, we pray, Lord. We pray for our, Lord, all of our medical professionals, Lord God, those that are standing on the front line, oh God, caring for those, oh God, Lord God, who have been affected by this virus. Father, we pray for them now, God, that you would cover them, Lord God. Lord God, that you would strengthen them, Lord God. Father, that they would not fear, Lord God. We thank you for the angels of the Lord God, that you are camping around about them, Father. Lord God, we pray for family members who have lost loved ones, oh God, even due to this virus, God, that you would comfort them now in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would bring comfort into their lives, God, in the name of Jesus. And most importantly, God, we thank you that you will help us to keep our eyes lifted up to you, to the hills from whence cometh our help, God. For we know that our help cometh from you, the Lord God, who has made the heavens and the earth. And we thank you for the warring angels, oh God, that are even fighting now on our behalf, God. And so, Father, we just glorify you. We magnify you. We praise you. We lift you up, God. For God, it is truly all about you. Come on, so wherever you are in your home, just lift your hands up and begin to bless the Lord. Begin to praise his name. Hallelujah, for he is worthy. Yes, he is. All glory to God. He is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, good morning, House Church family. How are you? 
listen, it is such a blessing to be able to come to you live. We are streaming from the house, church, y'all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And it is a blessing to join you in your homes or wherever you may be tuning in to us on today because we are sticking with the mandate that God has given to this church. We are connecting God's house to your house. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And welcome, welcome, welcome to all of our uh, first time guests that are streaming with us. We are excited about you. Amen. And so as you know, House Church, on behalf of our pastor and our beautiful first lady, we thank God for you tuning in with us on today because we know that there are some other uh, social media pages that you could have tuned in on this morning, but we're so glad that you decided to stream with us on this morning. And listen to all of our first time uh, guests that are streaming with us and to those that have been hanging with us for a little bit while we've been streaming. Listen, when this band is over and we can come back, we look forward to seeing your face in the place at 5149 Indian River Road here in the beautiful city of Virginia Beach, Virginia. So once again, we thank God for each and every one of you. Listen, we know that there are so many things going on, the virus, and we continue to hear about that day by day. You can't cut on the news and go anywhere without hearing about it. But I was talking to someone this week, and they said something that was just so inspiring, something that I already knew, but it just they just ignited something within me, that when we, we know that God's word works, God's word will never fail us. And during times like this, all we have to say, especially because we know Jesus lives on the inside of us, we say, Father... You say it. Father, you say it. And on this morning right now, we're about to put God's word to work, and we're going to say, Father, you say it. As we declare what God has decreed over each and every one of our lives, amen. and that's Psalms 91, our canopy of protection. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold, and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Oh, come on and praise the name of the Lord wherever you are, where you're standing, right in front of your keyboard, right in front of your phone, right in front of your computer. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord right now. Come on. For the song says, how great is our God. Come on and turn.
my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. That's freedom, though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. Oh, there's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom, though you've captured me. I've got joy instead of mourning. Come on and say there's beauty. I've got true love. I've got true love instead of pain. There's freedom though. There's freedom though you captured me. I've got joy instead of I've morning. got joy instead of morning. Come on, let's lift them up again. Say there's beauty in my brokenness. There's beauty in my brokenness. I've got true love. I've got true love instead of
Jesus, lift them up again. Come on and say, oh, you. been so free caught in your love I've never been more secure knowing your heart I've never been so free caught in your love for me I've never been more secure knowing your heart I say that one more time I've never been so free I've never been so caught in your love in your love for me I've never been more I've never been so free, caught in your love for me. I've never been more secure, knowing your heart, Lord. Come on and know the heart of the Lord. Hallelujah. Or oh, come on if you know the heart of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Or oh, what the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Or oh, come on, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? We have the liberty. We have freedom. We are not bound by what's going on in the world today. But the hand of the Lord is upon our life. And we just worship his name. We give him glory. We give you honor. I 
the Lord well we are so excited to be here with you to come right there into your home into your living room into your bedroom wherever you may be we're just excited to be in the house of the Lord well y'all know what time it is it's time for an offering amen so listen go with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 26 for our tithing offer scripture that's right you right there where you are on your bed in your pajamas with your fuzzy slippers on Go ahead and pull out your Bible, pull out your iPhone, your iPad, whatever you need to do, because God is going to be as real as he is right here with us in the building as he is right there with you. So Genesis chapter 26, as a reminder, don't worry about walking. You can, you're free to move about the cabin, uh, even though you're right there in your house, right? But I would remind you that um, there's multiple ways that you can give on today. You can give via uh, the website right there. If you go to the very user-friendly toggles on the website where you'll see both uh, the online giving tab as well as the Givelify tab. Please, you know the deal, House Church. You have been taught, uh, Body of Christ, those of you know that it's God's will. It's not how much it is, but it's what it is. It's not what it is, right? It's, it's not how much it is. It's what it is. It's the tithe, and that belongs to God. So if you would, go with me to Genesis chapter 26. We're going to read a couple verses right here, uh, beginning at verse 1. I'll be reading from the King James Version, and I believe we'll have it up for you as well. So Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. Here's what it says. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Now listen, right there where you are, if you don't mind, go with me and read uh, verse 3 together. Ready? Come on, y'all ready? Let's go. Sojourn in the, this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Thank you all so much for participating with me right there in the reading of God's holy word. Listen, right here in this particular passage of scripture, I love it because it talks about a famine. It talks about a time when things were not as they should. It was a barren time. People didn't have all the things. There was a lot of uh, civil unjust, if you will, and a lot of uncertainty. But I love what happened, uh, Isaac did, like many of us, you know, when you see all the things going on around us sometimes, we feel that we want to follow what everything else, what everybody else is doing. But I love what happened. God said, listen, don't go down to Egypt, don't follow the crowd, but you need to follow the cloud of my glory. He said that if you stay right here, stay in this very land where the famine is, where it's barren, where it's desert, where things don't look like they should look, where there's some uncertainty, stay right there. And because of your obedience, I'm going to bless you right where you are. 
Man, that's good news to me, man. Because right where I am, God said, it don't matter about what the economic status is. It don't matter about no stimulus. Oh, good God Almighty. God says that if you just be obedient, stay right there, keep your eyes focused on the Lord, and God is going to bring forth the promises that he stayed, that he promised unto you. But here's the best part. If you go to verse 6, verse 6, when I read that, I got so excited. Come on, put up verse 6 for me. Because verse 6 says, and Isaac dwelt in Jeroboam. In other words, he stayed right where he was. And if you keep reading, the Bible says, in that same year, Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped the harvest. I want to challenge all of you right where you are. That right where you are. It doesn't seem like much sense. Some folks are... Uh, they're afraid because they may be on a fixed income. Some folks, because of their job uncertainty, Isaac, in the midst of a famine where there was no fruitfulness, where there was barren, where there was desert, God told him he, he, he received the word of the Lord. He was obedient, and he put more confidence in God than he did in the strength of man. And as a result, when he sowed in that land, he reaped the same year, the same year a harvest. So I want to tell you, I want to challenge you right now, as you're going to not only so you'll give your, your tithe, because that belongs to God. We already been taught that. But also as you, by faith, release an offering unto the Lord right now in the midst of it. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it debt-free. You can call it my, my corona, uh, uh, anti-corona seed, whatever you want to call it. But you can sow that seed and watch, according to God's word, that you will reap a harvest this year. While everybody else is stressing, you're going to be the one that's going to reap. So if you believe that, go ahead and you don't have to stand. You can sit right there, but we're going to pray, and then we're going to declare what God has already decreed in our house church confession, all right? So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you right now, Master. Lord, we thank you for the confidence that we have in your word, that while many folks, Father, are looking to and fro, God, as to what they're going to do and how they're going to figure it out, Father. Lord, our decree is that some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, but we trust in the name of the Lord. Father, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and we, the righteous, we run into it and we are safe. So, Father, even now, as we're going to release our tide, Father, and even sow our seed right in the midst of what appears to be a famine, what appears to be, Father, some confusion, Father, Lord, what appears to be chaotic, God, we're going to sow our seed right now. And, Lord, know that you're going to release what we need, Lord, for our future. So, Father, I thank you for everyone, Father. That's sowing right now, God, via, via uh, Giblify, Father, and the online app, Father. All those that are being obedient and responding not to my voice, but unto yours, Holy Spirit. And, Lord, I thank you that you would do for them what only you can do, and that's open up the windows of heaven and pour us all out a blessing that we won't have room enough to receive. So it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Come on, say amen right where you are. Amen. Amen. Now let's do our church confession like we believe it. Y'all ready? Y'all just said, are y'all ready out there? Yeah. All right, here we go. People are standing in line to get into this church to hear the word of God. We speak to the north, south, east, and west, commanding them to give up and to keep not back, bringing the sons and daughters of the house from near and far. There is a person in every seat, and our sanctuary is filled to its capacity in every service with an expectation of signs, wonders, and miracles. Our Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. is filled. Our Wednesday night service at 7 p.m. is filled. And any other service that we may have will be filled. Every need in this ministry is met above and beyond what is required, and we are 100% tithe givers. All of our properties are paid off in full, and we owe nothing to no man but to love them. We declare that every member of this church is healed, healthy, blessed, and prosperous. And we are reaching the world with the gospel through our prayers and financial support. For this is a prosperous year for us, and the door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ, and because we walk by faith, 
and not by sight, our vision comes to pass. And the door of failure has been closed. And we shall not know defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us. And the door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. And because we walk by faith and not by sight, our vision comes to pass. And the door of failure has been closed. And we shall not know defeat. For this is a prosperous year for us. And the door of success has been opened. We shall succeed in everything in Christ. And because we walk by faith and not by sight, our vision comes to pass. And the door of failure has been closed. And we shall not know defeat. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was able also to perform because it's all about Jesus. Amen and amen.
in the house of God. God bless you, House Church. Those of you that are streaming live with us, I know Facebook Live is on, Instagram Live, all of you on the watch party, we thank God for each and every one of you joining us this morning for worship and the word of the living God, First Lady. Amen. It is just so good to be here in the house of the Lord on this morning. We thank God for all of you who are tuning in to receive the word. And we know that this is going to be a right now word. Absolutely. And this is going to be a good word yeah. because this word is from the Lord. Yes, Amen. Absolutely. So we are blessed to be in the house on this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I tell you that praise and worship was awesome. God bless you guys. God bless y'all. Bless y'all over there. Praise the Lord. All those that's here with us, we're still practicing that social distancing. We have us a wonderful, wonderful crew of 10 people, First Lady. Only 10. 10. But you know, one of the things I thought about with the 10, how they went and they said, first it was 100, and then it was, first it was 250, then it went down to 100, <laughs> then it went down to 50, and then they came to 10. And I thought it was interesting that they stopped at 10. Well, there's a revelation with that because even God stops at 10. Yes. Praise the Lord. 10 yes. represents the tithe, no less than 10. So praise God. So we have our wonderful, wonderful anointed crew of 10 people that's here with us. Well, we are ready to share this word with you guys, and we pray that it would be a tremendous blessing to each and every one of you. You know, over the last few weeks, First Lady McGee and I, we've actually, and I think we shared this last time, First Lady, that so far since this has happened, we've actually shared eight messages, eight messages so far from the word of the living God to keep us encouraged and to keep us strong during these unprecedented times. You know, one of the things that has actually happened is that now the Lord is just revealing to us how much of the church we actually are. Once again, we thank God for our building. We're glad to be here this morning, but we realize that the Bible says that you are lively stones. So we're actually the building, the spiritual house of God. And so we're so grateful for that. Thank God for this wonderful social media venues and avenues that we can still bring the gospel unto each and every one of you. So if you would, locate for us Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4. I'm going to pray while you're doing that. Locate that for us, Philippians chapter 4. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. We give you all the honor and all the glory for yet another wonderful opportunity to be a blessing to the body of Christ by sharing what thus saith the Lord. I trust and pray that First Lady McGee and I, that we have studied to show ourselves approved unto you, a workman that not needeth not to be ashamed. May we rightly divide the word of truth this morning so that we as your people can have the right things operating in our hearts as well as in our lives. We do set a guard over our hearts and a watch over our lips that we will not say anything perverted or contrary to that which is sound doctrine. But may the words that we share with each of these that's watching, our brothers and sisters in Christ, 
We trust and pray that the word will go forth with boldness, with power, with clarity, unhindered and unchecked by any demonic force. And we give you, Lord, all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Locate Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And uh, First Lady, we're going to start off in the New Living Translation. And then what's customary with us, we'll weave back and forth uh, into the New King James. But let's look at one verse, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, New Living Translation. And this is what it says. It says, the peace of God is much greater than the human mind can understand. Mm. This peace will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Once again, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, from the New Living Translation, First Lady. It says, the peace of God, I love this, is much greater than the human mind can understand. This peace will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. If you're not afraid to high-five someone in your family right there, just go on and touch the screen and everyone say, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Yeah, come on, everybody up in here, say it. I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Praise the Lord. That's what we want to talk about for the next few moments. I just don't understand. And I want to subtitle this, Experiencing God's Peace during a pandemic. Experiencing God's peace during a pandemic. Amen. Theor theoro Theoretical. Yes, that <laughs> word. Theoretical <laughs> physicist Albert Einstein says, and I quote, peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. Mm, mm. One more time. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. Praise Amen. the Lord. Praise we the can't Lord. force peace, yeah. but we have to understand peace. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. We got to understand what peace means, and that's yes. what we're talking about this morning, experiencing yes. God's peace during a pandemic. Absolutely, First Lady. Well, you know, we're actually into this now. We're about a month in and a few days into this worldwide pandemic that we know now as coronavirus or COVID-19. And one of the things that we all have noticed is that the statistical numbers of the amount of people that have been affected by this virus, both globally and here in America, they continue to climb at, at an alarming rate. I mean, it's always changing, yes. First Lady, yes. from day to day, minute to minute, and from hour to hour. Share with everyone the numbers that we just picked up even from this morning. From the John, John Hopkins University, the total case globally are 1,204,246. Mm. The global deaths are 64,846. Wow. And here in the United States, the total cases is 312,245. And the death totals in the United States is 8,500. Three. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we keep uh, our prayers going for the yes. ones who have lost their lives. Absolutely. We want to continue to pray for their families. We send out our condolences yes. to them. And for even for the ones who have been diagnosed with the yeah. virus, Pastor, yeah. we also yeah. want to keep them up in prayer. Also, we still believe in God that they will be healed right. in right. Jesus' name. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. And as a result of all the stuff that's been happening, First Lady, Share with them about the amount of people that have filed for unemployment. In the United States, over 10 million people wow. have filed for unemployment because they have lost their jobs wow. during this time. Over 10 million people. That's a lot. And that's a lot of people. That's a whole lot. That's a whole lot that's of people. That's a whole lot. So yes. we're praying for everyone who may be in those type of situations as well, First Lady, that the Lord will open up doors of opportunities and that their families would not struggle or even suffer during this time because that is an alarming number of people that have filed for unemployment, you know. Now, with all that being said, there's no doubt that constantly watching the news or other social media venues and hearing about the effects of the havoc that the virus is wrecking and the toil that it is taking on humanity worldwide, that fear can actually 
grip our hearts and our minds if we allow it to. You know, that's one of the things I shared with you guys last week, I believe it is. You know, as a pastor, I'm constantly watching the news. As a matter of fact, First Lady will tell you, my television is glued to it during this time. I flip back and forth through various um, news outlets. But while I'm watching this, I'm not allowing it to affect my spirit. I'm not allowing it to cause me to pick up a spirit of fear, but I watch it to gather information so I can come out like now to be a blessing to you, right. to let you know that even though you're hearing that report, there's a report that we should believe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's yes, a report yes. that we should believe, and that's what the Bible teaches us, who has believed the report of the Lord. And yes. so we thank God for all the things that they're doing to keep us informed, to keep us up to date. But we don't let a spirit of fear, First Lady McGee, grip us from that because we believe the report of the Lord. Yes. Now, we're not here today to just pub up these numbers. We like to start off like that, but we're not here today to pub up these numbers. We're here today to let you know that even in the midst of this pandemic, and you've been hearing about this 24-7 yes. for the last month and a half, we want you to know that you can have peace yes. in this pandemic. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. You can have peace in this pandemic. So I want to drop some seeds on you. Listen at this. So we're here this morning to encourage your hearts to let you know that in the midst of the chaos, the uh -huh. confusion, the calamities, and the casualties. Yes. Man, I love that when the Lord dropped that on me the other day. And the casualties, Amen. we can still have peace in God. Yes, we can. And we do have peace in God. And Absolutely. we do have peace going on right now, even through this virus. We should be having peace. Amen. 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 Now, the definition for the word peace is to be mentally calm and quiet mm -hmm. and in a state of tranquility and serenity. Mm -hmm. And it also means the absence of mental anxiety. That's the one right there. The absence <laughs> of mental anxiety, mm -hmm. not always dwelling on this virus that yeah. is going on. Of course, it's going on right now, but not always having your mind on it. There are other things to think about yeah. besides this virus. That's exactly right. Amen. There's a whole lot to think about. Yes. And I love this definition, First Lady, to be mentally calm and quiet. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some of us haven't been quiet in a long time. <laughs> to be mentally calm and quiet and in a state of tranquility and serenity. And then I love this last part. It is the absence of mental anxiety. To be at peace is the absence of mental anxiety. And so when you're constantly hearing this news about the pandemic, anxiety can begin to set in. And God wants you to know that in the midst of the pandemic, you can still operate in peace. I love this, the absence of mental anxiety. Well, the way we do that is by trusting in God. You have to always keep your trust in God. Matter of fact, let's go on and hashtag that up right now. <laughs> hashtag I trust in God. Hashtag I trust in God. Come on, one more time. Hashtag I trust in God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody called me the hashtag preacher the other day, so I might as well just go on and rest in that. Hashtag I trust in God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Read Psalms 91 for everybody. First Lady, just a few verses. Amen. Psalms 91, verse 5 through 7. Uh, we quoted that on this morning, mm -hmm. but it says, You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flieth by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, mm -hmm. nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Yeah. A thousand may fall at your yeah, side, yeah. and ten thousand at your right yeah. hand. But this virus shall not come oh, nigh come you. Come on now. Come on now, work it. But this virus yeah. shall not yeah. come nigh come you <laughs> because God is covering us. Absolutely. Amen. A thousand may fall at come our on. side come on. and 10,000 at yeah. my right hand, yeah. but it will not come Absolutely. nigh you. Us. No, and that's what we've been seeing, First Lady. Yes. We've been seeing, we opened up with all those different numbers, right. but like what the Lord just had you to share with us, but it shall not come right. near us us. We're right. the people of God. We're in covenant with God and we're trusting in God. We're obeying the laws of the land now. Right. You have to do that. Romans yes. 13, 1 to 5 is very clear. We're obeying the laws of the land. Right. We're not fearful, but we're not foolish either. So That's we're right. obeying the laws That's of the right. land. We're cautious. And yet at the same time, our trust is in God. Right. Isaiah 26 and verse 3 says this, you will keep him in perfect peace 
whose mind is stayed on you yes. because he trusts in you. See, yes. we said that earlier. We're going to be in peace during this pandemic because we trust in God. Amen. So Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you mm -hmm. because he trusts in you. During this pandemic, you have to keep your mind on God. Yes. Keep your yes. mind on God. Yes. Keep your mind on God. When you keep your mind on God, he will keep you in perfect peace. Yes. Sure, we're hearing about all the different deaths. We're hearing about the layoffs. We're hearing about all these different things. It's one negative news after the other. Keep your mind on God because yes. God said, I'm going to keep you. The person whose mind is still on me, I'm going to keep you in perfect peace. Amen. Not just peace, first lady, perfect, perfect peace. peace. Perfect <laughs> peace. Praise the Lord. And then 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7, as we're, as we're picking up these bricks, laying this foundation, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says, cast in all your care on him, yes. for he cares for you. Now, now that's clear. Casting all your care for him, for he cares for you. So what are you concerned about this morning? What is plaguing your mind and your heart this morning about this pandemic? Some of you have been bound by a spirit of fear. Some of you have been bound yes. by a spirit of anxiety. Yes. I loose you now in the, in the name, name of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. I release upon you a sound mind, yes. a sound yes. mind. Yes. God hasn't given you a spirit Hallelujah. of fear, but of love. Love, Hallelujah. power, and a sound yes. mind. A Hallelujah. sound mind. Yes. During this pandemic, I have a sound mind. Yes. Hashtag, I have a sound mind. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be moved by what I see, and I'm not going to be moved by what I hear. I trust in the word of the living Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Man, I'm about ready to have church up in here. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise Hallelujah. the Lord. Now, listen at 1 Peter chapter 5, 7 from the Amplified Version. It's the classic version of the Amplified. It says, casting the whole of your care, mm -hmm. all your anxieties, uh -huh. all your worries, yes. oh, my goodness, all your concerns once and for all. Brandon, did you hear that? Steve, did you hear that? Once and for Amen. all on him, yes. for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Yes. Hallelujah. Lynette, Wanda, did y'all catch that? Can I read that again? <laughs> Praise God. Let me read that again. Casting the whole of your care, here it is, all your anxieties, all your worries, uh -huh. all your concerns. Uh -huh. Anxieties, worries, concerns. Anxieties, worries, concerns. Anxieties, worries, concerns. We're to cast all of that yes, yes. on him. Casting the whole of your care, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all. Uh -huh. Once and for all. Amen. That means once you cast it up on him, leave it alone. That's right. That's Leave right. it alone. You know, it's just, like a, it's just like a scab. You know, if someone gets a cut and they have a scab, the scab has a purpose, First right. Lady. It has a purpose. The purpose of the scab is to protect that area that's sensitive, right. that area that has been disrupted. And it's also designed to help heal it. Right. And one of the things that many people love to do, they love to keep picking. They love to keep picking at the scab. And when they keep picking at the scab, listen at this, it prolongs the healing process. Yes. Yeah, good. yeah. When you keep picking at the scab, it prolongs the healing process. God just said to you and he just said to me, cast all your cares during this pandemic. Cast all your cares, all your worries, all your concerns on me once and for all. Yes. Leave it alone. Yes. Stop picking at it. Yes. Yes. Stop picking at it. When I wonder what's going to happen now. Man, look at all these people getting laid off. I wonder when I'm going to get laid off. Look at all these people getting the coronavirus. I wonder when I'm going to catch it. Look at all this that's going down. I wonder what's going to happen to me. See, there you go, picking at it when God said, cast all your cares, all your worries, all your concerns on me yes. once and for all. Everyone shout, leave it alone. Leave it alone. Matter of fact, hashtag, leave it alone. Hashtag, leave it alone. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm leaving it alone, man. I'm Amen. leaving it alone. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go ahead, First Lady. Go ahead. Amen. <laughs> For the next few moments, we want to talk about a few helpful keys on how to experience the peace of God. Mm. 
a few helpful keys on how to experience the peace of God. And it all comes from Philippians chapter 4, just two verses. Yes. Verse 6 and verse 7, right. where we started. It's all right here. Go ahead. Amen. And the first one is staying patient. Mm -hmm. Staying patient. And it's coming from verse 6a. Mm -hmm. And it says, be anxious for nothing, <sighs> but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, yeah. let your requests be made known to God. Yeah. Yeah. The first way we experience the peace of God is by staying patient. Staying patient. Staying patient. Verse 6, uh, 6a again says, be anxious for nothing. There it is right there. Be anxious, be anxious for nothing. Amen. Be anxious for nothing. When I study the word of God probably in my home, I love to look at words, and it says be anxious for nothing, right. nothing, nothing. Separate that. Be anxious for no thing, no thing. Nothing, one word, but when you separate it, it makes two words, yes. no thing. Uh -huh. Be anxious for nothing or be anxious for no thing. Nothing is going to make me anxious. Right. I'm not going to be anxious because of this pandemic. I'm going to be patient, trusting in God, that God is going to see us through. Yes, Hallelujah. Is. This too will pass. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Now, the definition for the word patient is enduring, trying circumstances with even temper. Mm. It also means calmly awaiting an outcome yeah. or result without anxiety. There it is, yeah. And it also means persevering without feeling uneasy or worrying <laughs> about the uncertainty of something. Yeah. It's an enduring, trying circumstances with even temper. Yeah, even temper. Even temper. Calmly awaiting an outcome or result without anxiety. It's yeah. just like when you go to a doctor and you're waiting to receive yep. results from a test you just have. Right, right. And and you being patient through yeah. those through for waiting for Absolutely. those results. Absolutely. You just you're not getting anxious. No. You're not worrying about it. You're not being too concerned about right. it. But you're just waiting on the results. Just waiting of on that. The you're results. just waiting on that results. You're yeah. just being patient. And when you get those results, you may not expect the outcome that you're looking for, but you know what? We still praising God in the results that that's we exactly get. That's exactly right. So we that's are exactly being right. patient. We're patient. Amen. Yeah, that, that's exactly right, First Lady. And that's the first way that we experience the peace of God, like we're talking about yeah. during this pandemic, from the text. From the text. Be anxious for for nothing or stay patient. So, you know, during this time with the constant bombardment of hearing about COVID-19, it can cause you to feel tremendous anxiety about your own personal health and the health of your family and, family and your loved ones. And while we should approach this information that's being provided to us about the virus with precaution, it should also be done patiently yes. and without allowing fear, anxiety, and worry to run rampant in our minds, yes. to run yes. rampant in our minds. I love what publisher Dan Zadra had to say, and he says this about worry, and I quote, real simple, worry is a misuse of the imagination. <laughs> worry is the misuse of the imagination. You're going to have to let that soak in. Worry is a misuse of the imagination. God has given us a mind where we can imagine wonderful and powerful right. things, right. dealing with vision, imagination, image. We can see images in our mind. And worry, I love this quote, worry is a misuse of that imagination. You're worrying about this and you're worrying about that. And if the truth be told, most of us, we worry about things that haven't even happened. Yes. We worry about things that haven't even taken place yet. This is one reason through the word of God that I trust and pray that I have developed through the word one of the mindsets and the mental disposition of I'll deal with it once I get to it. You know, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. I'm not trying to cross a bridge before I get there. Once I get to the bridge, then I'll cross it once I get there. I'm right. the type of person is once I know what I'm dealing with, then I know how to deal with it. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm yes. not worried about this. I'm not worried about that. I'm talking about you too. You're not worried about this. You're not worried about that. You're staying patient. Amen. Hashtag stay patient. Amen. Hashtag stay patient. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead, First Lady. In James chapter 1, verse 2 to 4, it says, My brethren, mm. 
Count it all joy mm -hmm. when you fall into various trials, yeah. knowing that the testing of your faith okay. produces patience. Okay. But let patience have its perfect work, all right. that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Yeah, there it is. Amen. Yeah, Amen. There it is. You say, my brother, when we are to count it all joy, yeah. when we fall into various trials, yeah. no matter what trials that we're going through right now, we should still count it joy. That's exactly we right. We're going through this virus trial right now. Right, we right. should still be counting it count joy. joy. You're going through financial trials. You should still be counting it joy. Yeah, yeah. You're going through sickness trials. You right. still should counted be joy. counted it counted joy. joy. And, Amen. And one of the Amen. reasons, sweetheart, let me just tag in with that because that's so wonderful. One of the reasons why we should count it joy if I'm going through financial situations is because now God gets to show himself strong. Yes. Another yes. reason why I should Amen. count it joy if I'm sick in my body is because now get, God gets to reveal himself as my healer. Yes. He gets to reveal himself yes. as my deliverer yes. so I can count it joy. And then notice what the text said that you just so wonderfully read. Knowing that the testing of your faith, yes. the testing of your faith. Yes. So what's being tested right now during this pandemic is your faith. Yeah, that's what's being tested right now. You know, thank God we're in the building today, but we haven't been able to come to the building to worship together with one another. What's happening? Your faith is being tested. Yes. Yeah, your faith is being tested. Your faith in God, your trust in God. Can God keep you even though we're not here physically yes. together with yes. one another? Can God keep you yes. or is your salvation just predicated on showing up on Sunday? No, no, my salvation, the Bible says work out your own salvation yes. with fear and trembling. Amen. I can work out my own salvation because I have a salvation that works. Yes. Yeah, my salvation, it works not yes. just on Sunday, but it works on Monday. Y'all help me preach up in here. <laughs> Y'all, come on, Elder, help me preach up in here. My salvation works on Monday, it yes. works on Tuesday, it works on Wednesday, Every it day. works on Thursday, yes. it works on Friday, it works on Saturday. It works whether I'm here with you or whether I'm not here with you. Right. I work out my own yes. salvation. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so your faith is being tested right yes. now. Your faith is being tested. Amen. And look at Matthew 6. Find Matthew 6, verse 25 for us. Locate that. Matthew 6, verse 25. And this is a little more lengthy. It's verse 25 to 34. But listen at this. It says, therefore, I say to you, this is Jesus talking. I say to you, do not worry. <laughs> Do not worry about your life. So Jesus starts off saying, I'm saying to you, don't worry. Don't worry. What, what was the name of that, that cat that made that song years ago? Y'all help me out up in it. What was that cat? What, what's his name? What's his name? Bobby McFan. What, what was that song? Uh, the, don't worry, be happy. Do, 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 do. Don't worry, be happy. All right? Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds. Now he's given us an object lesson. Right. He's telling us, don't worry about this or that. that. Now let me give you something to look at, right. to show you what I'm talking about, to illustrate what I'm talking about. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Uh -huh. Look at that. Are you not of more value than they? Yes. God is saying, is not your life more valuable than a bird? Uh -huh. Than a bird. Yes. We wake up every morning and we see birds flying all over the place, birds in our yards. They're pecking. They're, they're eating. They don't wake up every morning and say, what we going to do? <laughs> no. God has taken care of them. He starts off by saying, don't you worry, but now let me give you an illustration uh -huh. to show you what I'm talking about. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Hashtag, I'm more valuable than a bird. <laughs> Yeah, go on and do that. Hashtag, I'm more valuable than a bird. They in here rolling at me. Hashtag, I'm more valuable than a bird. And then he says in verse 27, which of you, oh, this is good. Uh -huh. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? In other words, what he's meaning by that, he's saying, which of you can add more height to you? Or really what he's saying is, which of you can change anything mm. by worrying about it? You can't change nothing, okay? That's what he's saying. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? 
So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. Now he, he takes you from the birds to the lilies of the field. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30, now if God, now if God, now if God, now if God, so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, you cut grass down, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Verse 31, therefore do not worry. He said it again. Do not worry saying, do not worry saying, uh -huh. do not worry saying. This is how you pick up a spirit of worry uh -huh. by saying. Hmm. That's good. <laughs> I'm going to let that soak in for a little bit for even everybody sitting right here. This is how you pick up a spirit of worry by what you say. Hmm. I wonder if I'm going to get the virus. Uh -huh. Now that spirit of worry yes, come up on you. Yes. I wonder, see, because of what you're saying, I wonder if I'm going to be laid off my job. See, now because of what you're saying, you're picking up a spirit of worry. Yes. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for all these things the Gentiles seek? For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. God know you need a job. Uh -huh. God knows you need a job. Yes. God knows that you need all these things. But seek first. Oh, this is beautiful. Yes. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Verse 34 is where we close with that. Therefore, do not worry. Here's a third time yes. he says, don't worry. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Uh -huh. In other words, he's saying, here it is Sunday. It's Sunday, but you worried about Monday. And you haven't even gotten through Sunday yet. And each day brings its own set of circumstances. It brings its own yes. set of trials. Yes. It brings its own set of adversity. And so why are you worrying about days that's not here yet? Because you're in today. Today has enough troubles of its own. Yes. Yes. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. Look at that. So the first way that we experience the peace of God during this pandemic is that we stay patient. In other words, we're not caught up with worry and anxiety. Go ahead and read those quotes right there, First Lady. Arthur Eckhart Tolle says, and I quote, worry pretends to be necessary, mm. but serves no useful purpose. <laughs> <laughs> worry pretends to be necessary. Yeah, pretending but serves no useful purpose. And then former politician Roy T. Bennett says, instead of worrying about what you cannot control, wow. shift your energy to what you can create. <laughs> oh my goodness. You, you need to read good. that one again, that's powerful, that's powerful. Instead of worrying about what you cannot control, Come on, Steve. shift your energy to what you can create. Shift your energy, shift your, en shift uh -huh. your energy. Shift your energy. There was a song called The Shifting in the Atmosphere. Shift yes. your energy. Yes. Shift your energy. You're focusing on all this other stuff yes. that you can't control. Shift, shift your energy. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. I love that. Go ahead, sweetheart. Amen. The second point that we want to talk about on this morning mm -hmm. is saying prayers. Saying prayers. Saying. S-A-Y-I-N-G. So yeah, saying so we stay prayers. Patient. We so stay we stay patient. patient. Uh -huh. That's verse 6a. From Philippians 4, right. verse 6a, we stay patient, right. and now we, we say, say prayers. Say in prayers. From saying prayers, okay? Amen. And this is in verse 6b yeah. from Philippians chapter 4. Mm -hmm. And it says, be anxious for nothing, okay. but in everything by prayer mm. and supplication mm -hmm. with thanksgiving. There it is. Let your request be made known to God. Yeah, there it is. Saying prayers by is, saying but prayers. in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So yeah. the second way we experience the peace of God <laughs> is by saying prayers. Saying prayers. Hashtag saying prayers. <laughs> Hashtag saying prayers. This is the second way, you guys, that we experience the peace of God. Number one, we have to stay patient. We're not caught up with worry or, or anxiety because of what's going on. Right. The second way is by our saying prayers. You know, um, there was, back in the 80s, this iconic wrestler by the name of Hulk Hogan. 
And Hulk Hogan had this tremendous slogan that he would say during every interview back in the 80s. This was when he was wearing the red and the gold colors and the bandanas. And every time he would do an interview, he would start off with this. To all my little Hulkamaniacs out there, brother, I say, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, and you'll never go wrong. That's my best Hulk Hogan I could do. I love, I love wrestling. It's not wrestling, it's wrestling. But he would always say, to all my little Hulkamaniacs out there, brother, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, and you'll never go wrong. So even back then, that was a part of his slogan, right. say your prayers. Yes. And this is a very simple point, but it's one that needs to be said. Because we can't stress it enough that during this pandemic, if you're to experience the peace of God, you're going to have to be a person of prayer. Amen. Maybe you never prayed as much as you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, use this, use this as an opportunity to get closer with the Lord Amen. through prayer. Prayer is communicating with God and then being quiet long enough to allow God to communicate back with you. And so prayer will be vi a vital element to your and my remaining peaceful during this pandemic or this crisis. It was theologian John Wesley who said, and I quote, God does nothing but by prayer and everything with it. Yes. Wow. Yes. I love that. God does nothing but by prayer and everything with it. And we all know the phrase, prayer changes things. Yes. Prayer changes things. And not only does prayer, prayer change the outcome of things, but prayer changes us internally. Yes, it does. Prayer, prayer changes us. Yes. You know, we become intimate with the ones we pray for, and we become intimate with the one we pray to, yes. which is the Lord. We pray to the Lord. The more I spend time in prayer with him, the more intimate I become with him. Amen. And then the more time I spend praying for you, the more intimate I am with you in a loving way, in a brotherly way, in a sisterly way. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. In 2 Chronicles mm -hmm. chapter 7, verse 14, mm -hmm. it says, If my people yeah. who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Yeah. Then I will hear from heaven mm -hmm. and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If we, the people of God, we will yeah. humble ourselves, we pray and we seek the face of God and turn from all the things that we shouldn't be doing, God <laughs> said he will hear from heaven he will forgive our sin, and he will heal our land. Yes, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. You know, so really, so really the revelation becomes that the healing of our land is actually tied to the prayers of the righteous. Amen. You know, we're believing God for this pandemic to be over. We know what our governor said. You know, our governor said that this thing will last, this stay-at-home uh, edict will last with us till June the 10th, I believe it was. We're believing God that this thing will be over before then. Before before then. And so really, according to the text, uh -huh. the healing of the land is tied to the prayers of the righteous. Amen. That's you and that's me. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah 65, verse 24, it says, it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that before they call, yeah. I will answer. Mm -hmm. And while mm -hmm. they are still speaking, yeah. I will hear. That's it. That's that it. before they call, before, before they you call. even start praying, <laughs> <laughs> Probably before you on, even Wanda. think up the prayer that you want to pray, God already knows what you're going Absolutely. to say. Amen. Absolutely. God hear your prayers before yeah. you even before say you their even prayers. Started. Before you even get started. Before you even talk and God hear what you want to say. Absolutely. Before you, before you even get it out your mouth, God yes. says, I already heard you. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Hallelujah. Huh? In Psalms 5.3, it says, my voice shalt thou hear in the morning, yeah. O Lord. Yeah. In the yeah. morning will I direct my, my, my prayer unto you that's it. and will look up. Yeah, that's it. Amen. Yeah. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto you yeah. and I will look up. Right. And Amen. that and that text, we gave everyone that text because that text deals with praying with purpose. Mm -hmm. He says, early in the morning will I direct. I will direct my prayer. See, I'm not just scattergunning. Right. I, I'm going to direct 
my prayers unto you. That gives the connotation, First Lady, of someone that is an archer. Mm -hmm. Someone who's an archer and has a bow. Right. They don't just pull it. No, they have to direct it right. in a particular place. And so that's the connotation of this text where he says, early in the morning, I will direct uh -huh. my prayers or I'm going to shoot my prayers towards you. Uh, Praise amen. the Lord. That's awesome. That's awesome. Amen. The next point is sharing petitions. Mm, mm. Sharing petitions. This is how we're going to experience the peace during yes. this pandemic. Amen. And we're going to look at verse 6C. Mm -hmm. Verse 6C from Ephesians chapter 4. And verse 6 says, be no, Philippians 4. Philippians 4. Mm -hmm. Uh, be anxious for nothing. Yeah. Verse 6, be yeah. anxious for nothing, yeah. but in everything by prayer and supplication uh -huh. with thanksgiving, right. let your requests be made known wow. to God. Yeah. Let your requests yeah, be made known to God. So the third <laughs> way that we experience the peace of God is by sharing petitions. Yeah, by sharing petitions. Amen. Yeah, go, go ahead. Go Amen. ahead. You got it. Flow with it. Amen. Now, let me give you the definition for this word petition before we go on. It says to solicit or to make a solemn request mm -hmm. or appeal to a superior authority. Mm -hmm. And it also means to ask for something. Yeah. To ask yeah. for something. That's what yeah. a petition is, is to ask for is. something. Ask We're for something. asking for something. Right. God, I need this. God, I right. need that. God, right. I need this. God, I thank you for that. Right. God, I need this. We're asking yeah. for Lord, something. Lord, I'm believing it's, you for this. Yes, yeah. it's, 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 it's uh, simple. We yes. just ask God. Very simple. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. We ask God for what we need. We ask God of the petitions that we are asking and want from him. Absolutely. Amen. And many people may, be have, may have a petition again. During this pandemic, we're talking about peace during this pandemic. You know, they may have the petition of believing God for a job if they've won that's been a father for unemployment. They have a petition that the Lord will take care of them during this time. We're believing God that he would heal us if anyone has been sick or anything of that particular nature. That's what a petition is. I'm asking God for something. I'm right. believing in the Lord to do something in particular. Right. And so this is one of the ways that we experience the peace of God during this pandemic. You know, we have to share those petitions, what we're believing God for during this particular time. You know, Luke 11 verse 9 to 10 says it this way. So I say to you, now this is Jesus talking. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Uh -huh. Seek and you will find. Yes. Knock and it will be open to you. Then he comes back in verse 10. For everyone who asks, receives. Right. That's beautiful. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Yes. Okay? So notice what Jesus said here. He says, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. So our text, in this particular text, we're talking about sharing petitions or whatever it is that you're believing God for. Just pray to God and just yes. ask God for that Amen. without worrying and being caught up in anxiety. In the text, he uses three words that we are accustomed to. Right. He uses the word ask, yes. he uses the word seek, yes. and he uses the word knock. Right. Yeah, yeah. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and and knock. If you take the first letter of all three of those words, ask is A, seek is S, knock is K, it spells ask. A-S-K. It all comes back to asking. You have yes. not because you ask not. So if I'm going to experience the peace of God during this pandemic, I'm going to have to be a person of prayer, and I'm going to have to be a person that know how to share my petitions with God, what I'm believing you for, God. Right. God, I'm believing that you will keep my family safe yes. during this time. I'm believing yes. in you that you'll keep the church safe yes. and that you'll keep the church strong during this time. Lord, I'm believing in you that not one person that I know will be infected by the coronavirus. Yes. Lord, I'm believing in you that not yes. one person I know will lose their job, so forth yes. and so on. Whatever it is that I'm praying for, what I'm believing God for, that's what I pray for. Right. It's just right. that simple. Yes. You have not because you ask not. not. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In Psalms 20, verse 5, mm -hmm. it says, we will rejoice in yeah. your salvation, yeah, and in the on. name of our God, yeah. we will set up our banners. Mm. 
May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there, there it is. May the Lord fill all your petitions. All your petitions. Amen. Yeah, may he fulfill all, all your petitions. All that you ask for, yeah. may the Lord yeah. fill it, and he will fill it. Amen. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Absolutely. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, it says, Now this is the confidence that mm. we have in mm. him, mm. that if we ask anything according to his will, Mama. he hears us. Yeah. Yeah. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, yeah. we know that we have the petitions that there, there we it, have asked of him. There, there it is. Very simple. There it is. Very, very simple. Amen. On two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Amen. That's what the Bible teaches yes. us. And you just gave them Psalms 20 and 5, where he says, may the Lord fulfill your petitions. And now 1 John 5, 14, 15, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. Right. It's just that simple. We trust in the Lord. But what sets all of that up, First Lady, is the first part in verse 14. Now, this is the confidence yes. that yes. we have in him. Yes. We have confidence in him. Yes. We have confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, well, real simply put, his will is his word. So I have to ask according to his word. Amen. Hashtag his will is his word. Amen. His will is his word. If you want to know what the will of the Lord is for your life, turn to the word of the Lord. Yes. And you have a lot of people, they're always questioning, they're always wondering, what is God's will for my life? What is your will for my life? Turn to the word. The more you spend time in the word, the yes. more his will yes. will be revealed to you. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we thank God for that, that we have whatever we ask because we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So that's beautiful, First Lady. And that brings us to the last way that we experience peace during this pandemic. Amen. And the last way is surpassing peace. Mm. Mm. Surpassing peace. Surpassing and it, peace. Yes. And it, this comes from verse 7. Yeah. Philippians 4. Verse 7. Verse seven. Amen. Yes. And the peace of God. Mm -hmm which surpasses all understanding, mm, mm, will mm. guard your hearts and minds wow. through Christ Jesus. Wow. And the peace of God, yeah. which surpasses all understanding. Sometimes we just don't understand <laughs> God. God, why? Yeah. We just don't understand. But we still have the peace of God. Amen. Yeah. And, and sometimes people don't understand why we have that peace. That's true, too. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, yeah. will guard your hearts and minds yeah. through Christ Jesus. Right. Now, finally, upon our stand, patient Mm -hmm. Upon our saying our prayers, mm -hmm. upon our sharing our petitions, yeah. we can experience God surpassing peace. Surpassing peace. Yes. Surpassing peace. He said it's the peace of God right. which surpasses all understanding. Yeah. Remember, that's what we started with. That's the text. That's why we named this, this particular lesson, I Just Don't Understand. It's right. the peace of God that passes all understanding. Yeah. You could be losing a job, but because you have the peace of God, folk don't understand why you're so peaceful. Yes, yes. Yeah, we got a pandemic breaking out around us, but because we're the people of God, we have confidence in God, we're peaceful right. in the midst of it. We're calm, cool, and collective in the midst of it. Doesn't mean we're not concerned, right. but we're cool, calm, and collective in the midst of it. Right. And people will wonder, how is it that you can operate like that? It's because I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Amen. This word surpass means to be greater than in degree, to be greater than in degree. Then it means to do more than or be superior to. Now, this is good because it says it's the peace of God. Right. It's not your own peace. It's the peace of God. Right. So the peace of God is greater than in degree to just my regular peace. Yes. The peace of God can do more than my regular peace. Uh -huh. The peace of God is more superior to my regular peace. Amen. Well, I think I'm teaching much better than y'all shouting up in here. <laughs> to do more than or to be Amen. superior to. And then, it no, and then notice this. It means to be beyond in limit and capacity. Now, we're talking about the peace of God right. that passes all understanding. Now, remember, let me go back to, to the opening text. Remember the opening text the peace from the New Living Translation. The peace of God is much greater than the human mind can understand. 
The peace of God is much greater than the human mind can understand. So many times we can actually experience the peace of God in, in tumultuous situations and people don't really understand how come we're so peaceful. Right. It's because it's the peace of God. Yes. God's peace far surpasses my own natural peace. Yes. It was the peace of God that caused Jesus to lay down in the, in the boat when they were going to the other side. He told them, let's go to the other side, and then he went to sleep, and a storm broke out, and he was asleep. And the Bible says that the disciples said, Master, do you not care uh -huh. that, we're not, that we're perishing? Do you not care yes. that we're perishing? He was asleep. Why? Because he operated on another level of peace. Yes. It was yes. the peace of God that passes all understanding. Yes. When Lazarus was dead, Lazarus' sisters came to him and said, Lord, had you been here, our brother would not have died. Jesus just coolly, calmly, and collectively went to the tomb, said, take away the stone, show me where you've laid him. Lazarus, come forth. He was cool, yes. calm, yes. and collective. Yes. That's the peace of God yes. that passes all understanding. Amen. And many times we don't even understand. How is it that you're not running around during this pandemic with your head cut off like a chicken? <laughs> it's because I'm operating in the peace of God. I'm operating in the peace of God. And his peace surpasses my peace. And what God says to us is when you don't have enough peace during this pandemic, huh, huh, let me give you some of mine. <laughs> Woo, glory to God, man. Glory to God. Go ahead, first lady. Show them, show them where I got that from. <laughs> In John chapter 14, verse 27, yeah, it says, yeah. peace I leave with you. This is Jesus talking. Uh -huh. Yeah, go ahead. My peace yeah. I give to you. Yeah, hold, hold up, hold up now, hold up now. Don't, don't, don't move too fast. Don't move too fast. <laughs> okay, Who, whose peace? Whose peace? His peace. Whose peace did he say he was going to give? He's going to give. He said, peace I leave yeah. with you. My yeah. peace I give to you. Whose peace did he say he was leaving? His peace. His peace. Uh -huh. So evidently his peace is different from ours because he said, I got to leave you mine. Because right. you're going to go through some stuff that yes. maybe that's going to cause you to come out of peace. Uh -huh. But if I leave you some of my peace, you're going to be all right. All right. You're going you're gonna to make good. it. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sweetheart. Go ahead. Uh, from John the beginning. 14, 27, <laughs> from the beginning. Peace I leave with you. My peace I mm. give to you. Mm -hmm. Not as the world gives on, do on, I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, yeah. neither let it be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm about ready to take off. Elder, run for me right quick, Elder. <laughs> Y'all can't see him, but he running. <laughs> Thank you, Elder. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We're having Amen. fun in the house of Amen. God. Thank you so much, Elder. Praise the Lord. Y'all couldn't see it, but he just took off for me. Praise the Lord. But that's what Jesus said, Brandon. Jesus said, peace, I'm leaving with you. Right. Then Lynette, he qualified. He said, I'm leaving my peace. I'm leaving my peace. I'm leaving my peace. I'm giving to you. Then he said, not as the world gives peace. Uh -huh. I'm not going to do it as the world because the world, the world's peace is they're only happy when their happenings are happening the way they want them to happen. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's the only time that the world is happy. The world is happy when their happenings are happening the way that they want them to happen. Uh -huh. But the moment that their happenings aren't happening the way that they want them to happen, right. now they fall to pieces. Right. Jesus said, no, I'm not going to leave you that type of peace. Right. I'm leaving you my peace, yes. my peace, yes. and my peace passes all understanding. Then Colossians 3, verse 15, it says, and let the peace of God. See, there it is. There's the qualifier. And let the peace of God, not just any peace, right. the peace of God. Yes. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. This is beautiful, you all. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Let the peace of God, let the peace of God yes. during this yes. pandemic yeah, pay attention. Pay attention to what's going on. Let's abide by the laws. Let's be cautious. But don't be fearful. Be at peace. Yes. Be at peace. Yes. He says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Mm -hmm. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. I love that. Amen. To which also you were called in one body and be thankful. Amen. Businessman Thomas Watson says, and I quote, If God be our God, 
he will give us peace in trouble. When there is a storm without, he will make peace within. The world can create trouble in peace, yeah. but God can create peace in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so First Lady McGee and I, we wanted to share with you all what a joy it is to be able to come into your homes via live stream, and Facebook Live and Instagram Live and all these wonderful different avenues that we can still get the word of God to you. We covered four things from our scripture today, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7. And four ways that we can experience the peace of God during this pandemic. I just don't understand. It's the peace of God that passes all understanding. Number one, by staying patient. That's verse 6a. Number two, by saying prayers. We got to pray to the Father. That's verse 6b. By sharing our petitions. Whatever it is that we're believing God for. Whatever it is that we're trusting in him to do. We share that with him in verse 6 C. And then finally, First Lady, we capped it off in verse 7, surpassing peace. It's the peace of God that passes all understanding. I don't have to panic during this pandemic. I believe we shared that before, that the word pandemic, P-A-N-D-E-M-I-C, pandemic. If you drop out the letters D-E-M, it leaves the word panic. So with every pandemic comes panic, if you allow it to. But the word of the Lord to us is, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. And so we're here to share with you that you can still be at peace, even in the midst of this pandemic. Our family is at peace. Our home is at peace. We have our daughter here with us. She's probably watching now. We had her to drive down from Maryland. We didn't want her to be up there by herself. And then our son and his lovely wife and our grand candies, they only live about 10, 15 minutes from us. And we just saw them the other day, just hugged on them and loved on them the other day. Our family is at peace. Yes. And yes. so can your family yes. be at peace because of the word of the living God. Now let me shift gears just for a brief moment. I know some of you perhaps have, are watching us through this live stream and watching us through Facebook and Instagram live and maybe even through watch parties and perhaps you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to give you the opportunity to accept him into your heart and into your life now. You know, religion makes things extremely hard, but this is extremely easy. Those of you who don't have a relationship with Jesus but you want one, Man, do this with me now. Bow your heads. Yeah, right there. Right there, you. Right where you are. Bow your heads right now and just repeat this simple prayer with me. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, I confess my sins before you. I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I ask you to come into my heart and to live within me. And I will follow you all the days of my life, all the days of my life. I, accept you I accept you as my personal, as my personal Lord, and Savior. Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you, Jesus for, accepting me for accepting me in the kingdom of God. In, kingdom of God. in, Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There it is. Hallelujah. There it is. Hallelujah. You are a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. Welcome, 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 welcome to the family of God. Now, the next thing that you need to do, get yourself in a good Bible-believing church. Yes. If you're here in this area, the 757, and you don't have a church, we welcome you to come and be a part of what God is doing here with us at the house church. Yes. If you're here in the 757 and you have a church, stay at your church. Yes. Now is not the time to be church hopping online and all those different things. No, stay at your church. Yes. Bloom where you have been planted, yes. and God is going to bless you. And now I'm going to turn it back over to First Lady McGee, who has some wonderful words for us. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. I pray that you enjoyed the word on this morning and that you have the peace of God ruling within your heart, within your lives, within your family and friends' lives, in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we miss you guys. 
We love you guys. Yeah. And we will be back real soon, hugging on you oh. real tight yeah. when oh. we see you. So until we meet again, let's go in the peace of God. Let's go in the love of God. Let's go in the mercy of God. And let's go in the grace of God. Because it's all about Jesus. He's the one that we believe in. He's the one that we trust. And it is all about him because we praise him and we worship him and we lift him up. Yes. In the name of Jesus Thank Christ. You, Jesus. We love you guys. Love you. We bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Until we see you all again, God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Come on, Brandon. Take us up out of here. Oh, come on. Let's bless the God name bless of the you. Lord one more time in the house. Come on. Oh, come on, if you accept the salvation, come on and bless his name. Hey.
And you never failed me yet, never failed me yet. You are good to me, and I'm grateful, grateful. Say! Never fail me yet. 